Ndewo, welcome to my channel. So, what we're going to discuss today, which is a very important topic, is how to practice ancestral veneration without parental acceptance and without parental acknowledgement. Now, because of how things are, as in the but we don't need to remind ourselves because we've seen the destruction of ancestral shrines, we've seen the destruction of Ubindi Chie, we've seen the destruction of uh, staff of authority or for we've seen the destruction of so many conduits or sacred places that has been reserved for these ancestral shrines deities energies and all these cosmic beings that our ancestors once venerated we've seen the destruction that was ignited by religious intolerance and religious indoctrination and uh, discrimination we are first and uh, viewers in fact we have the front seat to witnessing this erosion of culture and traditions and most of us sat back most people fought back most of our ancestors fought back which now led to them being discriminated by their own family members we have uh, we have people who were traditional worshippers that even their children refused to take them to the hospital feed them or you know take care of them the way Igbo people take care of their fathers and their mothers because this parents or these aged people fought against the erosion of culture they stood on their integrity they stood on their courage and insisted that they want to preserve the ancestral way of life and it led to them being discriminated even within their own family units so so many fought against it some people stood aside and some people were even the perpetrators of this cultural erosion so we've seen all those things play out in our very before even up to this day we see we are still seeing and witnessing this erosion of culture and most of us are now doing our best to speak against it and hopefully with time we'll have institutions that are going to be dedicated at preserving these cultural institutions. Now the Christian wave has come and it has done or performed its duty of colonizing us mentally, colonizing us spiritually, and of course desecrating and destroying our culture. But currently we now have some sorts of a renaissance of Ndibo trying to reconnect to their ancestral way of life we now want to go back and revert back to our own indigenous culture ordinary we now want to look at our spirituality we now want to look at our economics we now want to look at how to use our natural resources and use those things to work for us we're not looking at the the cultural alchemy it will the Igbo ancient medicine, medical system that we had back in the day. So many of us are now waking up to that realization with the sheer fact of knowing that these people just came to colonize us and use us as labor. So many people are waking up, especially when it comes to Christianity, but waking up to say, oh, oh, that these people only used us for labor. And we are now saying, okay, no, that we want to go back to how our ancestors did it. So this became the foundation for why Ndibo are now reverting back to their ancestral way of life. And let's not forget that the whole miracle ministry that the church created became a facade. Even people that were now looking up to as people that have the eyes and ears of God, people like Father A.G.K. Mbaka, who misled us to tell us that the Holy Spirit, that God ministered to him that uh, we're going to have vote for Buhari and Buhari is going to be the savior that we are waiting for. And at the end of the day, what happened? So many people are now waking up and are now reverting to their indigenous way of life. And with that reversion comes a lot of resistance, especially 
by our elders because this whole mission is being pioneered by young people people that have access to the internet people that went to school people that have the privilege to leave the country and travel to where the society is working and where the government is now working for them instead of depending on god or spirits to work for them so this whole movement and renaissance is being championed by evil people that are waking up to say this system is just a lie so when we're now trying to do one or two things traditionally we are being faced by our elders we're being resisted by our elders we are being shut down by our elders and these are the, still the same category of elders that still occupy meaningful positions and they use those positions to even fight our culture, tradition, and our spirituality. Now, because of this renaissance, some of the things that were destroyed back in the day, Okwala, say, or for Obindi, Che, all those things that were destroyed back in the day, people are now trying to reinstitute those altars and those conduits with the mindset of them doing things the way their ancestors do it and using that thing for a particular purpose. So they are now trying to reinstitute those things. And because of the structure of Igbo culture, culture and spirituality, which means that it involves the extended family and also it involves a community. So it depends on which aspect that you want to reinstitute. If the conduit or the shrine was communally owned, it means that the community would still come together and agree towards the reinstitution or the reinstallation of that spiritual altar. Now, because, because in the Igbo we no longer have that unity, that one mind, it has become a problem because we can no longer come collectively in our family or in our community and say, I will want to institute this thing back that was desecrated or that was destroyed. We can no longer say these things. Because we have people that are going to come up and resist because they are still perceiving these traditional systems as archaic, uncivilized, and demonic. They will now tell you that this was the reason or this is the reason why this community is not moving forward. So they are going to be the resistance that some of us are facing. Even within our own communities, in our own, in our own lineage, probably... The, and your ancestors had an installation of our Kwale Omo, the deity of our fertility within the Igbo cosmological system. Or we have Ungu, or we had uh, Udo. They are going to resist it. If this resistance could come from the father, Nnawengu, and we know that without a father championing uh, a, a process within the Igbo spiritual system it is not going to be effective because in by based on the hierarchy that we have it is the father first it is the father first that intercedes in issues that concerns the lineage it is the father that acts as emissaries to the ancestors the father is the living ancestor while the mother is the is the connection or the conduit, the physical conduit towards Omoada issues that are relating to women. That's the structure that we have. Our society was somehow created and funded based on some sort of balance. Once we have a male institution, there will always be a female institution attached to it. So when this thing is now happening, and the father refuses to act in his capacity as in Nawenguru. What then is the outcome of, or what then would the children now do? Even those elderly ones that are supposed to be the Akajo for to the families of because these things are totally fatal when you get to a certain age you can now assume a certain position within the family in ansoka when an elderly person when it gets to your turn you would leave your family house and you would now move into an environment 
that is specifically dedicated to these elders. Now they, they live together as one in a very large environment. Now currently we now see elderly people who have, who have gotten to that age who are now supposed to be enjoying or taking care of those you know conduits. They are now refusing to step into that position. So this is these are things that you know many of us are, are, are having issues with. If you want to do some certain traditional ritual, you, you people are, are, are afraid that they are going to be resisted by their parents, by their own and their extended family. And this is why the question of how to practice ancestral veneration without parental acceptance or acknowledgement is vital. So in situations where you have done what you can do, you have told, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to do what you're supposed to do, but you know deep down that your parents would not give you the permission. What do you do? And some of them, the mere fact of knowing that you're practicing tradition could even lead them to disown you. So what do you do? Bearing in mind that our spirituality, our way of life, our belief system is rooted in familial and ancestral linkage. So you cannot just start doing something without the physical embodiment of those ancestors, those spirits being aware that you're doing something like that. But nonetheless, without their support or their, or their acknowledgement, what can you do as a revert? What can you do? Now, the first one is publicly declare your intention. Publicly declare your intention. Now, you have to announce your intention that you want to reinstitute this conduit. If you're the only person championing it, you have to be be the person that will say, look at this and I want to do this thing. I went to our father said that we, our family needs, so you're supposed to champion it. You're supposed to voice it out. Even though you know that they are not going to agree, you're supposed to voice it out. Now we call this thing, or in a you're making it known vocally that this is what your, our family members are supposed to do. So you're, you're voicing it out. You're not standing on, 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 on the fence, pretending like, with, like other people that this thing that never existed or there is no problem or this thing does not need to be revisited and reinstituted. You don't have to pretend like others. So you're going to voice out what is going on. Now, the second one is that you have to seek guidance through Alpha. Now, don't act on your own. Don't just act on your own. So you have to use divination to understand the spirit's will. This is where you now ask questions like, can I proceed without my own extended family? Is it okay for me to do this thing without letting everybody know? You know, without having their permission, without even, you know, them telling you, you that you they don't, they don't, because they said, oh, we don't want this thing. You have to ask, is it okay for me to do this thing, even without their permission? So, Afa is going to help you in answering these questions. And you will now also ask the question of, of can I do this thing in my own space and newbie? If it is, let me say... Uh, an ancestral shrine you can ask the question can i institute this thing in my own house when i get my own property can i do this thing here Alpha would also give you a direction now the last question you're going to ask is is it better for me to wait till i get to a certain age because when you're young and they might be looking at you as like, but when you get to a certain age you've gotten some sort of an achievement your words becomes power when you say something, people are inclined to listen to you because many people co uh, connect gray hair with wisdom. So when you talk, they would listen. So these three questions are the questions you, you're supposed to ask. The first one being, can I proceed without my own extended family, without their permission? The second question becomes, can I do this in my own space? 
your annual be in with a water gun you'll be on any go give your own land you've built your own house you can look for a secret space and institute it there or the third question being is it better for me to wait till i get to a certain age now the third thing that you can do is you can create a secret space now you can set up a discreet altar or a secret location in your own house or in your own maybe you have a rented apartment you have an extra room you, in your own space you can raise a small altar where you can now perform your rituals your medicate your meditation and connecting with your ancestral spirits is amazing on that sacred and private space that you have carved out so this is where you will now be calling on that more you will not be giving, acknowledging, and pouring libation for that spirit within your sacred space. Now, the fourth thing that I want us to know is that you have to be respectful and be patient. Now, for some people, when they tell their parents or people that are supposed to tell, they allow it to get to a point of unsum. It becomes a problem. It becomes, they will start calling family meetings here and there. It could be it could be your manner of approach, and it could be lack of patience, because sometimes when you tell people something, when when people have been socialized right from a toddler, right from when you were still a child, you have been groomed in this system. It is now possible that you are no longer thinking straight. The only thing you know is, if it is not this thing, then I don't want to hear it. So you have to be patient with them because some of them are resisting these traditions. They are operating from a place of ignorance. They don't know. Far more, they are not aware. Now the problem is when you know that they are not aware and you're feeding into a narrative that is going to now bring this unity and this harmony in your family. So you have to be respectful. You have to be patient. If your father says, don't bring this thing into my house, don't start his behaving and start saying, oh, because I'm, I'm the one that is doing the right thing and you're doing the wrong thing and you disrespect your father and you will not go and bring what I don't know into his house. That house does not belong to you, especially when the man is still alive, even if you're the firstborn. Until that man is no longer alive, this is when you're not start having the right to do or bring in whatever you want to bring in into your father's house. So you have to be respectful and you have to be patient. So even if you want to do it and you're not beginning to disrespect your, your father, because if you disrespect your father, you're disrespecting your ancestor, even if they are in, they are in an enemy team. Even if your father is saying, oh, no, 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 I don't, my ancestors. But you, the moment you disrespect your father in the name of you're trying to honor your ancestors, <laughs> you're making a very big mistake because you cannot pretend, you cannot respect you cannot res disrespect your father and now say that you're not you're respecting your ancestors so you have to respect your father and by respecting your father you are now respecting your ancestors so in an age you there is no rush so what the only thing you can just be doing is look for these steps use alpha if that more has a, a shrine of its own, you can go there and do whatever you want to do there. They know your intentions. Far more big, they know your mind. They know what you want to do. So they are not going to fault you on it. So these are the th four steps that I recommended on how to practice um, ordinary this Igbo spiritual system without parental acceptance and without you know the acknowledgement of your extended family so i'm going to stop here and if you have more questions you can list it out and until next time yeah guys yeah